Bill O'Reilly here, Monday, March 15th, 2021. You are listening to the O'Reilly Update. Here's what's happening today in America. Anti-police riots return to the West Coast. Some black Americans say thousands in reparations is not enough. COVID cases now identical in Florida and California despite two different approaches. Europe bringing back the shutdown. Studies show the average American can tolerate just four hours with family this Easter. Also ahead, America is no longer a fair place. But first, hundreds of demonstrators closing downtown Portland, Oregon over the weekend, setting fire to a federal courthouse and other buildings. Cops detained at least 200 people, arrested more than a dozen for property damage. Far-left Mayor Ted Wheeler now asking for $2 million to refund the police after voting to defund the department last summer. He is a moron, this man. It is safe to say Portland is a mess. The town of Evanston, Illinois, allocating $10 million to racial reparations for black residents. But some in Evanston say $25,000 checks are too small. The president of the local NAACP calling the amount, quote, a drop in the bucket. Towns, countries, and even states can pay reparations if local authorities approve it. New statistics showing the damage inflicted by COVID is basically the same in Florida and California, despite two different approaches. Now, both places report about 8,900 cases per 100,000 residents and ranked 27th and 28th in the USA for COVID-related deaths. So apparently, the draconian California lockdown had little effect. Europe implementing even more restrictions to slow COVID. Germany, France, Norway, Italy, Spain, and Sweden closing sections of the economy. Officials in Ireland halting new vaccinations from AstraZeneca over reports of blood clots. That medication has not been approved in the USA. Holiday cheer. New study says 75% of Americans find it difficult to spend more than four hours with family on Easter or Christmas. The average person taps out after three hours and 45 minutes. In a moment, the unfair states of America. Right back. Are you looking for your next investment? Bill O'Reilly here. There are seven reasons to look at the NRIA Real Estate Development Fund. Monthly cash flow payouts of 10% annualized. Bonuses to 21% targeted. They strategically locate in lower risk, high demand areas people want to move to. New construction is short on supply. Real estate affords diversification and safety from stock market risk. Their short and long-term strategy provides for steady returns right now. NRIA is an industry leader with a 15-year proven track record. So, if you've been sitting on the sidelines or want to diversify, start your due diligence at nria.net. Or you can call 800-800-1414. That's easy. 800 800 1414. An offer of securities is only made by the NRIA Private Placement Memorandum. Read it first. Past performance does not guarantee future results. NRIA is a real estate development firm. Learn more at NRIA.net. Time now for the O'Reilly Update message of the day. What happened to fairness in America? All rational human beings have one thing in common. We are disappointed when treated unfairly. The doctrine that people should be given protection from malice and persecution is the essence of Judeo-Christian tradition. You must not bear false witness against another person. You are compelled to treat others as you want to be treated. Totalitarian societies laugh at those tenets. China persecutes anyone it wants. The Soviet Union seized massive personal property. Nazi Germany murdered millions of innocent men, women, and children based on ethnicity. Now, many Americans believe this country should be united against unfair treatment. And throughout history, we have vanquished brutal countries that rejected fairness. 
Millions of Americans have been killed defending the persecuted. However, our government was not fair to various groups, including African Americans and Native Americans. That is documented. However, again, the USA tried to correct historical and contemporary wrongs, and that is documented as well. Fairness is the driving force in civil rights and other corrective legislation. And most Americans continue to support an equal shot for all citizens to pursue happiness. But, and this is big, fairness is now being brutalized in the USA. Donald Trump was not treated fairly by the media. Doesn't matter whether you like the former president or not. If you don't understand that, Trump was denied any kind of balanced evaluation, then you yourself are not capable of fair assessment. Andrew Cuomo now stands accused. There's no doubt that his foolish nursing home order led to COVID deaths. But on the misbehavior front, the governor is being denied the most essential part of American justice, due process. Cowardly people are convicting him on allegations and press headlines. But as any fair person knows, it is not unheard of for accusations to be exaggerated and orchestrated. Ironically, Cuomo himself denied due process to Brett Kavanaugh and others. It is fair to point that out, but unfair to deny Cuomo an investigation, even if he is a hypocrite. Here's the truth, which is imperative to any society that respects fairness. The cancel culture is unfair. Believe all women is unfair. Taking skin color into account for anything is unfair. Allowing millions of foreign nationals to break immigration law is unfair. Change the law if it's pernicious. Denigrating heroes like George Washington and Abraham Lincoln is unfair. Persecuting non-liberal teachers and students is unfair. Forcing people of faith to contribute financially to abortions is absolutely a violation of fairness as well as morality. You would think President Biden might have processed that at weekly mass. Here's more truth. Failure to speak out against unfair behavior because you are frightened that you then may be treated unfairly will absolutely lead to the destruction of a just American society. The folks need to condemn the cancel abomination. I'm Bill O'Reilly, and I approve that message by writing it. For more honest analysis, please go to BillOReilly.com. In a moment, something you might not know. As you know, Joe Biden has won the election, and with economic uncertainty looming, I am now, more than ever, recommending you diversify with gold and silver. The only company I recommend is American Hartford Gold. I trust them. I personally have done business with them. They sell physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or put inside your IRA, and they make it easy. Please call them now, tell them Bill O'Reilly sent you, and they'll give you up to $1,500 of free silver on your first order. Since I've been recommending American Hartford Gold, gold itself up over 40%, silver up 60%. So don't wait, call them now, 877-444-GOLD, 877-444-GOLD, or text GOLD to 65532. Again, that's 877-444-GOLD or text GOLD to 65532. Now, the O'Reilly Update brings you something you might not know. Americans, beware. Today marks the Ides of March, March 15. Long associated with rotten luck and the assassination of Julius Caesar, the ominous day gets a pretty bad rap. But March 15th wasn't always a downer. In fact, it used to be a festival. Back in ancient Rome, the Ides marked the arrival of the first full moon of the new year. People got together for food, wine, music. There were even animal sacrifices to the deities, hoping for long-lasting life and good fortune. But a single act of violence would change the day's meaning forever. On March 15, 44 BC, despite numerous warnings from fortune tellers, colleagues, even his own wife, Julius Caesar dismissed his private security for a meeting with Roman legislators. Sixty conspiring senators were waiting for him. 
They stabbed him 23 times in the head and chest. Emperor Caesar, dead at 55. But all that et tu brute stuff? Shakespeare used a bit of creative license there. No historical record paints an accurate picture of Caesar's last words. Some accounts have him saying, and you, child, while others say he didn't mutter anything. Today, the Ides of March is celebrated in some very interesting ways, including toga runs and something called Brides of March. Before COVID, women would wear wedding gowns and hit the bars across San Francisco and other West Coast cities. And here's something else you might not know. Polls in Europe rank the Ides of March the second unluckiest day on the calendar. The most dreaded date is a Friday the 13th, which happens one to three times each year. According to researchers at the Stress Management Center in North Carolina, 17 to 21 million Americans fear the number 13. Many go as far as to alter their daily routines, refusing to fly or even get out of bed in the morning. So you might want to play it safe today. Beware the odds of March. And if some senators call you up and say, hey, let's have lunch, but don't bring your security. Um, I think you might want to pass on that. Back after this. Thousands of animals are abandoned in the wilderness in America, and they need your help. I partnered up with Delta Rescue, the largest no-kill, care-for-life animal sanctuary in the world. Founded by actor Leo Grillo, Delta Animal Sanctuary is a -a one-of-the-kind rescue. Trained attendants look after each animal, providing them with food, treats, toys, and affection. Also, Delta Rescue has an on-site animal hospital that operates 365 days a year. And unlike others, Delta Rescue believes in giving animals a right to life. They allow all moms to have their litters, then care for the entire family for life. Delta Rescue relies solely on donations from people like us to help fulfill their mission. Support Delta Rescue and put your legacy to work. Delta's tax-saving estate planning. Grow your estate while letting your compassion for animals live on well into the future. Learn more at deltarescue.org forward slash bill. deltarescue.org forward slash bill. Thank you for listening to the O'Reilly Update. I am Bill O'Reilly. No spin, just facts, and always looking out for you.